Okay, so we've started learning about research methods uh, back in February. We were looking at why sociologists study society and what methods they use to do so. So you listed loads of research methods, things that you've learned in science and elsewhere, and you thought about all the ways that sociologists find out about society. The key things that you need to do in this is you need to know about what methods are used, explain how they work, and also evaluate them. And there's a way that we evaluate every single method that we study. Um, and you'll be familiar with the use of PEPFOR, which we'll talk through later. So in the lesson, I asked you to recreate this diagram. Uh, you went outside and you learned all the words and you came back in. Um, it, these are basically the key things that you need to know for research methods. A few little bits off the bottom there, but um, idea that anti-positivists say that sociology is not a science. We've got ethical considerations, practical and theoretical. And all of those things come into PEPFOR to help us to evaluate a study. The key areas of evaluation, the first ones we looked at, are, is the study practical? Can you do it quick, quick, cheaply and easily? Or is it something that takes a really long time, lots and lots of money and lots and lots of commitment? In terms of ethics, will it harm anyone? We need to make sure that we consider the harm that would come to the participants, the people that you recruit to participate, um, but also to the researcher too. And so things that are much more ethical are things that are... Uh, where you can gain consent from the people who are involved and also to make sure that you're conducting the research in a safe environment. Often things like experiments are seen to be quite unsafe, unethical because people are being deceived, whereas an ethical thing would be perhaps a, an overt observation where you've actually got permission from everybody to be there. In terms of theory, we want to know whether it is quantitative, whether it measures numbers, or whether it's qualitative, whether, whether it measures people's feelings. Qualitative researchers are anti-positivists, anyone that is an interpretivist, like we, we researched Mead and Cooley at the start of the year. Um, our quantitative sociologists are our positivists who use numbers, patterns and trends, like Durkheim, Marx, all of our structuralist sociologists. Um, so we need to start considering evaluation at this point here. So we looked at these examples, we talked about how Mr Jones um, wouldn't be able to be very objective with his study because he, he kind of has quite a lot of emotion attached to his sc uh, school. He wouldn't be able to imprison students so it wouldn't be ethical um, and it, he certainly wouldn't be able to get consent from parents about this. Um, in Miss Bushnell finding out about sociology homework we suggested that actually students probably uh, would not appreciate being uh, observed in their own home and again there are massive ethical implications. It would also be really impractical, it would take a lot of time to study this um, and certainly um, there would be a lot of cost implications too. And then with Miss Taylor she wanted to do a little survey, she used SurveyMonkey, it's an online survey technique so people will probably be a bit more honest. Um, it's very practical, it's easy for her to carry out um, and certainly our quantitative sociologists would like that especially if all the questions are closed questions. Other areas of evaluation that make up PetVorg is the validity. Remember that validity is about the truthfulness, not about how repeatable or reliable it is. Um, validity is about a true idea of what people will think, so much more likely to be achieved during qualitative means using observations, interviews, mainly when they're unstructured. So people will give a really clear picture. Um, objectivity is about the bias of the information. It's argued that quantitative sociologists are not biased. That means that they don't impose their values when they're studying the society that they're looking at. Um, things that are subjective, so our interpretivist sociologists are anti-positivists that like qualitative data thinks it's okay to be subjective. It's okay to be biased. It's okay to get Verstehen, that true empathy of what people feel. So you, you are subjective, um, but they think that's a good thing. In terms of reliability, we need to remember this is about repeatability. Can we carry out the same information, the same research time and time again? Are we asking the same questions each time? People will obviously respond differently, but the reliability of a study is whether it can be repeated in exactly the same way every single time. Um, this enables us to achieve quantitative data, which we can use to compare across different groups, across different times, and usually then links into the representativeness of something. So we're looking at whether or not the appropriate target group has been chosen using a particular sampling frame. So a sampling frame in, uh, affects the representativeness of the study that's been carried out. And if it's an appropriate sampling frame that is a true representation of society, it can then be generalised to the whole population. 
Sometimes we only represent a small population, a target population within society. That might be university students, it could be single mothers, it could be ethnic minority groups. Um, what we do is we look at the value uh, of the sample that's been chosen to see if we can generalise that to the rest of the population. So we use the term PETVORG, practical, ethical, theoretical, valid, objective, reliable, representative and generalisable to help us to remember those key evaluative terms which we can apply to any research method that we study. And that was the end of that lesson. Um, just a quick note on how we use um, uh, research methods in questions, we need to make sure that we use our appeal paragraphs, we say what's good about the method using PETVORG and using the appeal paragraph structure, we then say what the problems are with this, again using PETVORG and the appeal paragraph structure, use examples of studies that we've looked at. Before you use your conclusion, you can evaluate further by suggesting alternative methods through the process of triangulation which we'll look at in a further lesson. So that's research methods as an introduction.